Um, someone once said that you live your life once, but if you do it right, once is enough. And I truly believe that. How many of you have had parents that all of a sudden you thought, gosh, did they live the life they really wanted to live? Are they really happy? Well, I spent most of my earlier years wanting to be hidden. I didn't want to be seen. Um, I was bullied every day as a child. I went to school every day and I was uh, tortured and bullied and, um, you know, I was basically, it, it wasn't happy at all, but I had no other choice but to go to school. And um, in order to not see what was going on around me, I became obese. Obesity is something that when you look at, it is more, people look at it more as a disability than they do someone that is drunk. They look at you like, oh, how is she eating that? Well, why do you think I'm eating in the closet? Because everybody would watch what I would eat when I wasn't in the closet. Everybody went to school to police academy. Everybody was the food police. I'm sure you guys know what the food police is like. But life basically had no meaning for me and no direction. And at one point, I was flunking out of college. Because the day I went into college, I was so heavy that I walked in, I sat down, I thought, I can't do this. I can't do this. I got up and I left. And I had no idea I was supposed to withdraw. So I started with a 0.0, .0 grade point average. But I graduated magna cum laude. So, thank you. So, there is hope. Um, growing up, I was given the biggest gift I could have ever been given. I was raised in a family where I was the only person that could hear. When I realized my experiences were gifts, I took what I wanted and I left the rest. My father has the most amazing gift of communication. His stories are really long. So now he will preface it with, want to hear a long story short? <laughs> My mom has the warmest heart and the most beautiful smile you've ever seen. And she has the best work ethic. And my sister, she gave me the strength to understand that when someone says no, we're just getting started. <laughs> All of this built my foundation. My husband, Mitch, who now has, is homesick with pneumonia, so he couldn't come. So I feel like half of me is not here. Um, and my daughters, Savannah and Allison, they inspire me every day to exceed all of my expectations. I started out fighting the world for my family, and now I fight the world for other illnesses that my children have. And it is unbelievable. I was born to be an advocate, and I will die an advocate. And that is the way I look at the world. I don't care who needs help. Just come to me. I'll do whatever I can. Um, my children are role models. They advocate for themselves and the good of others. They are the reason I decided to help and empower others. Basically, I looked at the girl that was working for me, and I said, how old are girls when they're having sex? And she told me, and I said, oh my gosh, I gotta start branding girls. What am I doing branding for Ralph Lauren? So I stopped and I decided that girls need brands because men get brands and girls get reputations. The only thing I have ever asked of the young women in my program is to take this newfound knowledge of leadership, take it back to their communities, Jewish or otherwise, and pay it forward. My pearl of wisdom today is, when you change the way you see yourself, you change the way others see you. Empower yourself to become the person you want to be, the person you never thought you could be. Thank you.